Sloan Stevens. Sloan Stevens, born March 20, 1993, is an American professional tennis player. She achieved a career best ranking of number three in the world after Wimbledon in 2018. Stevens was the 2017 U.S. Open champion, and has won six WTA singles titles in total. Born to athletic parents with backgrounds in collegiate swimming and professional American football, Stevens was first introduced to tennis at the club across the street from her house in Fresno, California. Her stepfather was a competitive recreational tennis player and served as her primary inspiration for beginning to play the sport. Stevens moved to Florida to train at a tennis academy, ultimately working with Nick Saviano for many years. She developed into a promising junior player, reaching a career-high ITF junior ranking of world number 5 and winning 3 out of 4 Grand Slam girls doubles titles in 2010 alongside her partner Timea Babos. While still just 19 years old, Stevens rose to prominence at the 2013 Australian Open with a semi-final run highlighted by an upset of then world no. Dat 3 Serena Williams. Although she climbed to as high as number 11 towards the end of that year, she later regressed and stayed steadily ranked outside the top 25 through the end of 2015. At this point, Stevens switched to a new coach, Kamal Murray, under whom she returned to an elite level and won three WTA titles in the first half of 2016. Her successful year was then cut short by a foot injury that kept her sidelined for 11 months. She returned from injury in the middle of 2017 and won her first Grand Slam singles title at the US Open in just her fifth tournament back. She was also awarded WTA Comeback Player of the Year for her successful season. In 2018, Stevens continued her success by winning her first premier mandatory title at the Miami Open, reaching a second Grand Slam singles final at the French Open, entering the top 10 for the first time, and finishing runner-up at the WTA Finals. Early Life and Background Stevens was born on March 20, 1993 in Plantation, Florida to Sybil Smith and John Stevens, both of whom were accomplished athletes. Her mother was the first African-American woman to be named a first-team All-American swimmer in Division I history. She is enshrined in the Boston University Athletic Hall of Fame and recognized as the greatest swimmer in the history of the university. Stevens's father was a pro bull running back for the New England Patriots in the National Football League. Pro Football Hall of Famer Raymond Berry regarded him as the best athlete he had ever seen. Smith left Stevens's father when she was a baby after his multiple arrests in 1994. She was raised by her mother and her stepfather, Sheldon Farrell, who married Smith in 1997 and worked as a business consultant. She has a younger half-brother, Sean Farrell, who played baseball and football at Notre Dame High School outside of Los Angeles. Stevens did not talk with her biological father until she was 13 years old, when he expressed interest in getting to know her after being diagnosed with degenerative bone disease. Even though they only met a few times in person, the two of them developed a close relationship remotely. Stevens's stepfather died from cancer in 2007, while her biological father died in a car crash in 2009. Stevens moved to her mother's hometown of Fresno in California at the age of two. She started playing tennis at the age of nine at the Sierra Sport and Racquet Club, a tennis facility located across the street from her house where her stepfather regularly played and her mother was taking lessons. Former professional Francisco Gonzalez, the head tennis pro at the club, recognized Stevens had impressive ability given her limited experience and recommended her to pursue more rigorous training opportunities. Two years after she started playing tennis, Stevens relocated to Boca Raton in Florida. She began training at the Everett Tennis Academy founded by John Everett and also run by his sister, International Tennis Hall of Famer Chris Everett. The following year at age 12, Stevens switched to the Nick Saviano High Performance Tennis Academy, and also began online homeschooling. After her stepfather's death, Stevens and her family moved back to their hometown of Fresno where her grandparents and other members of her mother's family still lived. From then on, she split time living in both California and Florida junior career. Stevens began competing in low-level events on the ITF junior circuit in 2006 at the age of 13. Her first breakthrough result came at the U.S. Open in 2008, where she reached her first doubles final at a Grand Slam with Mallory Burdett. She then finished the year with a semi-final appearance at the high-level Orange Bowl Tournament, a grade-A event. Stevens began 2009 by winning her first two tournaments of the year the Grade 1 Usta International Spring Championships and the Grade A Italian Open. Following these big titles, she only played in the remaining Junior Grand Slam events in 2009 and 2010, 
while also skipping the Australian Open. At the French Open, Stevens extended her main draw win streak to 16 matches in a row to start the season, despite needing to qualify for the main draw, before losing to French junior Kristina Mladenovic in the semi finals. Mladenovic ended up winning the tournament, and would also defeat Stevens in their next encounter at the Wimbledon quarterfinals. These results brought her to a career high junior ranking of number five in the world. During the U.S. Open, she left New York after her first match to attend her biological father's funeral in Louisiana. She returned to play and win her next match, but ultimately lost in the third round. In 2010, Stevens partnered with Timeo Babos to win the doubles title at all three majors in which they participated. They became just the second pair of girls to win three Grand Slam tournament doubles titles in one season after Karina Morariu and Ludmila Varmuzova in 1995. Stevens also reached at least the quarterfinals in each of the singles events. Her best singles result that year was a Grand Slam semifinal at the U.S. Open, where she lost to Daria Gavrilova in a third set tiebreak. Professional career 2007-11, tour debut, entering the top 100. Stevens played her first professional events on the ITF women's circuit in late 2007. In the spring of 2008, she received a qualifying wild card into her first WTA event, the Miami Open, where she lost her opening round match. Doubt she would lose in qualifying the next two years as well. Stevens also received wild cards into the U.S. Open qualifying rounds for three consecutive years. In her first appearance in 2008, she defeated world number 109 Melinda Zink while still only 15 years old, but was unable to advance to the main draw in any of these appearances. During the summer of 2008, Stevens won her first professional title in doubles at a low-level ITF $10,000 event in Wichita alongside partner Christina McHale. In the middle of 2009, Stevens participated in World Team Tennis as a member of the New York Buzz. Although she seldom played on the Pro Tour that year, Stevens decided to turn pro in October following a strong junior season. In March 2010, Stevens qualified for the Indian Wells Open to make her WTA debut a week before turning 17. She defeated Lucy Kradetska in her first career main draw match before losing to the defending champion, 12th seeded Vera Svenereva. Her only other WTA tour win that year came at the Swedish Open in July. Dad after starting the year ranked number 802, she finished the 2010 season just inside the top 200 at number 198. Stevens continued to climb the WTA rankings during the 2011 clay court season. She won her first professional singles title at the Camparini Joy Ellie Cup, an ITF $50,000 event in Italy. She then made it through qualifying at the French Open to make her Grand Slam main draw debut in singles. Although she lost to Elena Baltacha, she rose to a career best number 128 in the world. In August, Stevens entered the Southern California Open as a wild card and defeated number 20 Julia Gerges en route to her first WTA quarterfinal. Later that month, she was awarded a wild card into her first U.S. Open main draw. In the opening round, she defeated Reika Lukajani for her first Grand Slam tournament match win. She then backed up that win by beating 23rd seed Shahar Pier. With his third round appearance, Stevens made her debut in the top 100 of the WTA rankings and also became the youngest player in the top 100 at 18 years old. 2012, Teenage Success, Top 50 With an improved ranking, Stevens was able to play WTA tour-level events the entire season. Early in the year, she played in her first Australian Open main draw and made it to the second round. Stevens then closed out the winter hard-court season by qualifying for the Miami Open. Having played there every year since 2008, she picked up her first two main draw wins at the tournament, including the second one over number 30 Sarah Arani. In late April, Stevens made her Fed Cup debut in an away playoff tie against Ukraine. She won her only match, a doubles dead rubber with partner Liesl Huber, as the United States won the tie 5-0 to return to the top-level world group in 2013. After early losses at her first few clay court events of the year, Stevens finished this part of the season with three impressive results. First, she qualified for the Italian Open Premier 5 tournament and advanced to the second round. She then reached her first WTA semi-final at the Antarinasiano de Strasbourg. Dot finally, she produced her best result at a Grand Slam tournament to date by reaching the fourth round at the French Open. Stevens built on this momentum with a third-round appearance in her Wimbledon main draw debut, which was highlighted by an upset of 23rd seed Petra Sitkovska. 
This string of performances brought her into the top 50 of the WTA rankings for the first time. Back in the United States, Stevens played at the City Open in late July and made it to her second career WTA semifinal. She also reached the third round at the Premier 5 Cincinnati Open, where she lost a tight match to world number 3 Agnieszka Radvanska. Stevens's final tournament of the year was the U.S. Open. She lost in the third round to number 13 Anna Ivanovich after struggling with a torn abdominal muscle, which was initially injured during her fourth round loss at the French Open a few months earlier. Stevens later stated, I kept playing when I shouldn't have, as part of an effort to try to qualify for the Olympics. Doubt she ended up taking the rest of the year off to recover. Nonetheless, she finished the year as the youngest player in the top 50 at number 38. 2013, Major Semi-Final, Serena Upset, World No. 11 Stevens was ready to return for the Australian hardcourt season. In her first tournament back, she made it to the quarterfinals at the Brisbane International to set up an encounter with world number no. 3 Serena Williams. Although Williams won the match in straight sets, she praised Stevens, saying she could be the best in the world one day. Stevens improved on that result the following week with a semi-final at the Hobart International. She entered the Australian Open seed at 29th, her first Grand Slam tournament as a seeded player. She defeated four unseeded players to make her first Grand Slam tournament quarterfinal and set up her second clash with Williams that month. Williams entered the semi-final on a 20-match win streak, while multiple betting websites listed the 19-year-old Stevens as at least an 11-to-1 underdog. Stevens was down a set in a break early in the second set, but came from behind to pull off a huge upset. This was the first top-10 victory of Stevens's career and made her much more prominent. Although Stevens would lose her next match to world number no. 1 Victoria Azarenka, she rose to a career high ranking of number no. 17 after the tournament. Following the Australian Open, Stevens was forced to miss the United States' quarterfinal Fed Cup tie after aggravating her abdominal injury during her deep run at the tournament. When she returned to the court, this injury continued to hinder her performance as she did not defeat another top 50 opponent until after the clay court season. She played in the Fed Cup playoff tie in April and lost her only match against Sweden's Sofia Arvidsson. Nonetheless, the United States won the tie 3-2 to secure a place in the 2014 World Group. Despite these struggles, Stevens produced another good Grand Slam tournament result at the French Open, where she defeated three unseeded opponents, none ranked higher than now. Top 92, to reach the fourth round. She then lost to world number no. 2 Maria Sharapova. Stevens continued her Grand Slam tournament success at Wimbledon by making it to the quarterfinals, again without defeating a seeded opponent. She lost to the eventual champion Marion Bartoli. Her best win at these two majors came in the first round of Wimbledon against world number no. 25 Jamie Hampton. At the Cincinnati Open in August, Stevens scored her second big upset of the year when she knocked out Sharapova, the number no. 3 player in the world, in the second round. She lost in the next round to number 15 Yelena Jankovic. Two weeks later, Stevens entered the U.S. Open as the 15th seed, where she faced Williams again in the fourth round. This time, Williams avenged her Australian Open loss in straight sets and went on to win the tournament. Although Stevens continued to struggle outside of the majors after the U.S. Open, she was named the second alternate for the WTA Tour Championships. She finished the year at World No. 12 and was one of only three players to make it to the second week of all four Grand Slam tournaments in 2013, along with Williams and Agnieszka Radvanska. Stevens also reached a career high ranking of number no. 11 in October and became the second highest ranked American. 2014 Inconsistency Stevens began 2014 at the Hopman Cup with John Isner. The two Americans finished the round robin in third place in their group, with only one rubber win against Spain. Stevens also withdrew from her last match with a wrist injury. She was able to recover in time to open her WTA season at the Australian Open. A year after her breakthrough, she reached the fourth round and was again defeated by world No. 2 Victoria Alzarenka for the second consecutive year. Her next successful tournament came in March at the Indian Wells Open. Here, Stevens upset No. 13 Anna Ivanovich in the third round and went on to reach her first quarterfinal at a premier mandatory event. Stevens returned to the United States Fed Cup team in April for their home playoff tie against France. She played two singles matches and the decisive doubles rubber. After losing to an up-and-coming Caroline Garcia and picking up the win against Virginie Razzano, Stevens and her partner Madison Keys lost to the two of them in the final doubles match to relegate the United States into World Group II the following year. Once again, 
Stevens did not have a good clay court season, winning multiple matches in just two out of six tournaments. Nonetheless, her best result of the season came at the French Open, where she lost to number 4 Simona Halep in the fourth round. In the grass court season, Stevens was seeded 18th at Wimbledon, but suffered a first round loss to world number 109 Maria Kirilenko. This loss snapped her streak of reaching the second week of every major since the third round loss at the 2012 U.S. Open. Stevens did not do well at the U.S. Open either, losing in the second round to number 96 Joanna Larson while committing 63 unforced errors. After playing in one more tournament in September, she ended her season early to recover from a wrist injury. By the end of the year, she fell to number 37 in the world. 2015, First WTA Title Stevens returned from injury to start the season at the Auckland Open and the Hobart International, but lost in the second round at both tournaments. She entered the Australian Open unseated and faced a difficult draw against Victoria Azarenka in the first round. Azarenka eliminated Stevens for the third consecutive year. Stevens's first two successful tournaments of the year came at the premier mandatory events in March. She reached the fourth round at the Indian Wells Open, where she lost a three-set match to world number one Serena Williams, who was returning from her long boycott of the tournament. Stevens then improved on that result with a quarter-final appearance at the Miami Open, which included a win over rival Madison Keys in their first encounter. Despite these good results, Stevens got off to a slow start in the clay court season. She did not return to form until late May when she reached her second semi-final at the Antarinasiano de Strasbourg. Not having struggled at the last three Grand Slam events, Stevens managed to upset world number 15 Venus Williams in the first round of the French Open in their first ever meeting. Serena then defeated her in the fourth round, which turned out to be Stevens's best Grand Slam tournament result of the year. In her only grass court tune-up, Stevens made it to the semi-finals at the Eastbourne International. She notably defeated world number 9 Carla Suarez Navarro in the second round for her first top 10 victory in almost two years. Stevens closed the European season with a third round appearance at Wimbledon. Stevens did not play again until the City Open in August. She won the tournament without dropping a set for her first career WTA title. She defeated number 21 Sam Stoser in the semi finals and won the final against Anastasia Pavlyushenkova while only dropping three games. The title brought Stevens back into the top 30. At the U.S. Open, she was seeded at a Grand Slam tournament for the first time that year but lost in the first round to compatriot Coco Vandeway. Stevens maintained a steady ranking all year, dropping no lower than number 45 while rising no higher than number 28. She finished the season at number 30 in the world. 2016, three WTA titles, foot injury. In the off-season, Stevens hired Kamau Murray to be her new coach. Their partnership proved successful immediately. At the Auckland Open, Stevens won her first tournament with the two of them together. Due to a rain suspension, she was forced to play the end of her semi final match against number 17 Caroline Wasniaki as well as the entire final against Julia Gurgis on the same day to claim the title. Stevens would win two more WTA titles during the season. Her second title of the year also came on hard court at the Mexican Open. Her third and last title of the year came on clay at the higher level Charleston Open, a low level premier event. During the semi finals of this tournament, she defeated number two Angelique Kerber who needed to retire in the second set due to an illness. Part of her prize in Charleston included a car from the title sponsor Volvo, which Stevens was unaware of until after the tournament. In contrast to previous years where Stevens struggled at smaller tournaments while still doing well at bigger tournaments, she struggled at the Grand Slam tournaments and high-level premier events in 2016. Her best Grand Slam tournament results of the year came at the French Open and Wimbledon, where she reached the third round at both events. She also lost in the first round of the Australian Open for the second consecutive year, this time to a qualifier. Stevens's last tournament of the year was the 2016 Rio Olympics, which ended with a first-round loss to Eugenie Bouchard. After the Olympics, Stevens revealed she had been hindered by a left foot injury for most of the year, for which doctors recommended time off to recover. She finally did end her season upon being diagnosed with a stress fracture. Although she was initially expected to only miss several months, it was later discovered that she would need surgery that would keep her out for the first half of 2017 as well. At the time of her last WTA event of the year at the end of July, Stevens was ranked no. 22 in the world. 2017, Comeback, U.S. Open title, Year-End Struggles 
Stevens had foot surgery in January and could not walk again without a boot until the middle of April. While unable to play on the tour, Stevens was granted the opportunity to be a broadcaster for the Tennis Channel. She attended several WTA events in the United States including the Indian Wells Open, the Miami Open, and the Charleston Open, where she interviewed fellow tennis players and also provided analysis. Stevens returned to the WTA Tour in July for Wimbledon, about 11 months after her last match and with her ranking having dropped to number 336. She lost her first two matches back, one to compatriot Alison Risk at Wimbledon, and the other to number 2 Simona Halep at the City Open. However, she showed some signs of improvement by reaching the doubles final at the City Open with Eugenie Bouchard. By August, Stevens's ranking had continued to fall to as low as number 957. But she was able to reach the semi-finals of both Premier 5 tournaments that month, the Canadian Open and the Cincinnati Open. Dot during each tournament, she defeated four top 50 players including Lucy Safarova and 14th seed Petra Kvitova at both events, and also number 3 Angelique Kerber. Stevens was defeated by a top 10 player in both semi-finals, number 6 Caroline Wesniaki in Canada and number 2 Halep again in Cincinnati. Stevens had entered the month having never reached a semi-final at a high-level premier tournament. With these results, Stevens climbed back into the top 100 of the WTA rankings. Stevens entered the US Open at number 83 in the world, and still needed to use a protected ranking to be accepted into the main draw due to the entry deadline being over a month before the event. Her first upset of the tournament came in the second round over number 10 Dominika Sibulkova. In the fourth round, she defeated number 33 Julia Gurgis to advance to her first US Open quarterfinal in her first major quarterfinal since Wimbledon in 2013. She then defeated number 17 Anastasia Sevastova to set up the first All American semi finals at a major since Wimbledon in 1985, and the first at the US Open since 1981. Her semi final was against number 9 Venus Williams. After two lopsided split sets, Stevens won a tight third set to reach her first Grand Slam singles final. Madison Keys won the other semi final against Coco Vandeweghe. Stevens closed out the tournament by defeating Keys in straight sets to win her first Grand Slam tournament title. She became the first American woman other than the Williams sisters to win a major title since Jennifer Capriati won the Australian Open in 2002 and the first to win the US Open since Lindsay Davenport in 1998. She also became the lowest-ranked US Open champion ever, and the fifth lowest at any Grand Slam tournament. After the US Open, Stevens did not win another match the rest of the season. This stretch notably included two matches at the year-end WTA Elite Trophy as well as two singles rubbers in the Fed Cup final against Belarus. Nonetheless, the United States won the tie 3-2 to give Stevens her first Fed Cup crown. This was the first title for the United States since 2000. Stevens finished the season ranked number 13 and was named WTA Comeback Player of the Year. 2018, French Open finalist, WTA Finals runner-up, world number 3. Stevens extended her losing streak to eight matches at the Australian Open. She dismissed concerns about her form from the media, saying, Everything's good. Just relax, everybody. It'll be okay, don't worry. In the coming months she would prove to be correct, first by snapping her losing streak at her next tournament in Acapulco. In March, Stevens returned to form and won the Miami Open, her first premier mandatory title. She defeated three top ten players at the event including No. 3 Gerbine Muguruza and No. 10 Angelique Kerber in the fourth round and quarterfinals, and No. 5 Yelena Ostapenko in the final. With this performance, she also cracked the top 10 for the first time. Despite winning the second biggest title of her career, Stevens was unable to make the quarterfinals in any of her French Open preparation tournaments. The highlight of her clay court season in the lead-up to the French Open was the Fed Cup semi-finals on the road against France, where she won both of her singles rubbers over Pauline Parmentier and Kristina Mladenovic to lead the United States to a 3-2 victory. Stevens entered the French Open having never reached the quarterfinals. However, she was able to produce her best result at the tournament, making it to the final. In the semi-finals, Stevens won a rematch of the 2017 U.S. Open final against Madison Keys the first All-American semi-final there since 2002. Despite going up a set and a break, Stevens lost the final to world number one Simona Halep, her first loss in a WTA singles final. Nonetheless, this run catapulted her to a career-high ranking of number four in the world, 
making her the first American woman other than the Williams sisters to be ranked in the top five in singles since Lindsay Davenport in 2006. Stevens did not carry any momentum into the grass court season, losing at Wimbledon in the first round in her only event. Nonetheless, she moved up to number three in the singles rankings after the tournament. With a higher seed, Stevens had a strong U.S. Open series for the second consecutive year. She finished runner-up at the Canadian Open to Halep, her second high-level premier final of the year. At the U.S. Open, Stevens was unable to defend her title, losing to Anastasia Sevastova in the quarterfinals in a rematch of last year's meeting at this tournament in the same round. For the second straight year, Stevens began the Asian hardcourt season with multiple losses. However, unlike the previous year, Stevens was able to win two matches on the continent at the China Open. She then closed out the season by participating in her first WTA finals in Singapore. In the round robin stage, Stevens swept her group of Naomi Osaka, Kiki Burtons, and Angelique Kerber to advance to the knockout stage. After a dismal start in the semi finals where she lost the first eight games of the match against Karolina Pliskova, she recovered and won the match in three sets. In her final match of the season, Stevens was able to win the first set against Helena Svitolina, but ultimately lost the match. She finished the season ranked number 6 in the world, her best year-end ranking to date. 2019, Rankings Drop, Zero Finals Stevens struggled throughout the 2019 season. Although she remained in the top 10 for the majority of the year in large part due to ranking points she was defending from the previous year's WTA finals, she could not match her best performances at the Grand Slam tournaments or other higher-level events. Two of her biggest improvements came at two Grand Slam events. Stevens reached the fourth round at the Australian Open, securing her first match wins at the tournament since 2014. She also reached the third round at Wimbledon, despite having her lost previous to her opening round matches there. Her best Grand Slam performance was a quarter-final loss to Joanna Conte at the French Open, where she could not defend her runner-up finish from the previous season. Conte also defeated her at Wimbledon. Stevens ended her Grand Slam season with an opening round loss at the U.S. Open to qualifier Anna Kalinskaya. Outside of the majors, Stevens' best performance also came on clay at the Madrid Open, a premier mandatory event. During the tournament, she reached the semifinals, where she lost to no.7 Kiki Burtons. Aside from this tournament in the French Open, the only other event where she reached the quarterfinals was the Charleston Open at the start of the clay court season. Stevens fell out of the top 10 shortly before the U.S. Open, and again afterwards. She fell out of the top 20 upon losing her 2018 WTA Finals rankings points near the end of the season. 2020, Continued Struggles with Form At Brisbane, Stevens lost in the first round to qualifier Ludmila Samsonova in three sets. At Adelaide, Stevens lost in the first round in straight sets to world number 201 Irina Rodionova. This was her first loss to a player outside the top 200 since 2011. At the Australian Open, Stevens lost in the first round to Zhang Shui, despite serving for the match in the second set. Stevens also lost in the first round in Acapulco, losing to world number 270 Renata Zarazua. At Monterey, Stevens beat Emma Navarro in the first round, before falling to Leila Annie Fernandez in the second round. Dot. World Team Tennis Stevens has played five seasons with World Team Tennis starting in 2009 when she debuted in the league with the New York Buzz, followed by a season with the Washington Castles in 2014, the Philadelphia Freedoms in 2017 and 2018, and the New York Empire in 2019. It was announced that she will join the Chicago Smash for their debut season, during the 2020 WTT season set to begin July 12 at the Greenbrier. Rivalries Stevens vs. Keys Stevens's biggest rivalry is with her close friend and compatriot Madison Keys. Keys has said, Sloan and I, since we were 12 and 14, have constantly been compared to each other. Both players have been ranked in the top 10 by the WTA. They have also both been labeled as leaders of the next generation of American women's tennis. In spite of their rivalry, the two have looked forward to their matchups, with Stevens saying, Every time I get to play Maddie is great. Another opportunity for the both of us. Keys has said, I always want to see Sloan do well. I'd love for both of us to be able to be in the position to play each other multiple times, I'm always cheering for her. Stevens has a 3-1 record against Madison Keys, winning their first three matches in straight sets. After their first meeting in the second round of the 2015 Miami Open, 
Their next two encounters were both two of the most important matches of their careers. In 2017, Stevens defeated Keyes in the final of the U.S. Open to win her first major title. She then won their next meeting in the semi-finals of the 2018 French Open to reach her second Grand Slam singles final. Keyes defeated Stevens for the first time in the quarterfinals of the 2019 Charleston Open. Stevens vs. Serena Williams Stevens had frequently been regarded as a potential successor to Serena Williams to become the next top American women's tennis player, if not the best in the world. She grew up as a fan of the Williams sisters, but had lost some of her interest in them after they did not sign autographs at a Fed Cup tie that Stevens attended at age 12. Doubt she considered them to be friends when she was starting out on the pro tour, but described Serena as simply a colleague in early 2015. Her relationship with Serena became strained after their match at the 2013 Australian Open. After Stevens's victory against her at the tournament, Serena commented, I made you, in a tweet believed to be directed at Stevens and did not speak to her younger compatriot until at least May. Nonetheless, Stevens has said the two of them still had a good relationship. Stevens has a 1-5 record against Serena Williams, with three of their matches coming in 2013 and the other three in 2015. Her only victory against Serena came at the 2013 Australian Open when she was still relatively unknown as a 19-year-old. The match win and her run into a Grand Slam singles semi-final garnered international attention and put her on the cusp of cracking the top 10 of the WTA rankings later in the season. With Serena entering the match in excellent form and also having defeated her much younger opponent earlier that month, Stevens was listed as high as a 16-to-1 underdog. All of their matches since have been contested at high-level premier tournaments or Grand Slam tournaments. In 2015, Stevens won the first set of their encounters at the Indian Wells Open and the French Open, but ultimately lost in three sets in both instances. Stevens vs. Halep Stevens and Halep have built a rivalry centered around their highest-profile matches in 2018. Because Halep has dominated their matches, Stevens has downplayed their rivalry, saying, it's not a rivalry if you don't beat the person. International Tennis Hall of Famer Chris Everett has praised their rivalry, saying, I liked a lot, because that is a contrast in personalities and styles, in moods, in coaches. That is a definite contest. Stevens has a 2-7 record against Halep. Halep won their first encounter in 2012 at the Barcelona Ladies Open. Stevens then won their next two meetings in early 2013, including a first-round match at the Australian Open as part of her breakthrough semi-final run at the event. Both of these wins came before Halep entered the top 10 in 2014. Since then, Halep has won all six of their encounters. Their two biggest matches came in 2018, both of which were three set finals. In the first such match, the French Open final, Halep came from a set down to defeat Stevens for her first Grand Slam title. This was only the fourth time in the previous 47 Grand Slam singles finals where the winner of the first set was unable to win the match. Their next big match, the final at the Canadian Open, was ranked as the match of the year by the WTA. Halep won the first set of the match after saving four set points, two while serving at 6-5 and two more in the tiebreak. After Stevens was able to push the match to three sets Halep was able to regroup and win the match. Prior to these finals, Stevens had never lost a final on the WTA Tour. Playing Style Stevens is an all-court player, having reached the quarterfinals or better at all four majors. Her favorite surface is clay, on which she was a finalist at the French Open. However, most of her best results have come on hard courts, including her U.S. Open and Miami Open titles, as well as five of her six titles in total. She has never won a professional title on grass, and Wimbledon is the only Grand Slam event where she has not made it to at least the semi-finals. Stevens often plays behind the baseline, relying on her athleticism to defend against her opponent's shots. She excels at countering powerfully hit shots, and is capable of turning defense into offense. Stevens' game is commonly referred to as possessing easy power due to the seemingly casual nature in which she injects pace into her shots. She sometimes flattens out her shots, even on the run, and goes for stinging winners. Stevens has the ability to hit powerful winners as she takes large swings with her forehand. In contrast, she has a more compact swing with her two-handed backhand. She favors her forehand, and will run around her backhand at times to play her stronger ground stroke. Stevens excels in point construction, and varies patterns of hitting in order to confuse opponents. Stevens has an uncharacteristic style of play compared to her fellow top-ranked American contemporaries. 
whereas the other leading Americans are some of the most aggressive players on the WTA Tour, Stevens has a more passive approach. According to the aggression score metric, which measures a player's aggression based on how quickly they end points, either through a winner, an unforced error, or an opponent's forced error, Stevens has a score of 19.4%, which implies that 19.4% of her shots lead to one of those three outcomes. This score is average compared to other women's tennis players, and rates similarly to fellow Grand Slam tournament winners Justina Nan and Victoria Azarenka. In contrast, Venus Williams is amongst the top 20% of most aggressive players, while Serena Williams, Madison Keys, and Coco Vandeweghe are all in the top 10% with aggression scores above 25%. Stevens has been perceived as having a nonchalant attitude towards losing matches and striving to meet expectations. Doubt her former junior coach Chris Everett has questioned her motivation on multiple occasions and attributed stretches of inconsistency at various times in her career to her mentality. On the contrary, Stevens has also shown the ability to use her mindset of not worrying about disappointing outcomes to bounce back from injury and poor tournaments. She demonstrated this type of mindset after her early 2014 U.S. Open loss, saying, I'm not going to dwell on this. I'm just going to keep improving and getting better and looking forward to the next tournaments. Coaches When Stevens was just starting to play tennis at the Sierra Sport and Racquet Club, one of her first instructors was Francisco Gonzalez, a retired professional tennis player once ranked in the top 50. Upon his recommendation, Stevens moved to Florida to train at an elite junior tennis academy. Although she started out at the Everett Tennis Academy for a year working with John and Chris Everett, she then moved to the Nick Saviano High Performance Tennis Academy, where she stayed for several years. Roger Smith began coaching Stevens in early 2009 and worked with her for several years. With Smith as her coach, she became a top-ranked junior with three Grand Slam tournament doubles titles and also cracked the top 100 of the WTA rankings. In June 2012, Stevens switched coaches to David Nankin in order to try to qualify for the 2012 Olympics. Although her ranking was high enough to qualify, she narrowly missed out on that goal as she was the fifth-highest-ranked American with each country only being allotted at most four players in each draw. Nonetheless, under Nankin, Stevens had her breakthrough tournament at the 2013 Australian Open and reached a career best ranking of number 11 in the world. She parted with him after the 2013 season in order to find a full time coach. Nankin had also been working with fellow American Sam Query that year. Stevens replaced him with Paul Anacone, who is better known for coaching two of the greatest players in tennis history in Pete Sampras and Roger Federer. Doubt she became the first woman to be coached by Anacone. Although the pair worked well together, Stevens split with Anacone in late 2014 after not matching the success from her previous year that season. Stevens briefly worked with Thomas Hogstead in late 2014. At the start of 2015, she returned to her longtime junior coach, Nick Saviano. While working with Saviano, Stevens won her first WTA title, but did not manage to ascend back up the WTA rankings. In the 2015 offseason, she replaced him with Kamal Murray. With Murray as her coach, Stevens established herself as one of the best players in women's tennis. She has since won five of her six titles, including three in 2016, her first major at the 2017 U.S. Open, and her first premier mandatory title in 2018. She has also reached a new career high ranking at number three in the world. Stevens split with Murray during the 2018 offseason before reuniting with him in August 2019 shortly before the U.S. Open. In Murray's absence, Stevens had worked with Sven Groneveld for three months. Dot. Endorsements Stevens is represented by TLA Worldwide. She has been sponsored by Nike since the start of 2018. Her clothing sponsor had previously been Under Armour since 2010. Stevens uses head rackets, specifically the Graphene XD Radical Pro model as of 2018. Following her U.S. Open victory, Stevens accrued several new sponsors, including the automobile manufacturer Mercedes-Benz. She has also appeared in television advertisements for Built with Chocolate Milk, a campaign to encourage chocolate milk as a recovery drink. Her other health-related endorsements include Dutera, Precision Nutrition, and Colgate. Dutera is a company that primarily sells essential oils, while Precision Nutrition provides coaching for diet and exercise. With Colgate, Stevens is a part of their Bright Smiles, Bright Futures campaign that focuses on educating children about oral hygiene. 
Stevens has previously signed a deal with the American Express credit card company and was formerly an endorser of the Listerine mouthwash product. Dachi was also a brand ambassador for USANA, a nutrition company. Moreover, Stevens has worked with Time Warner Cable as part of their Connect a Million Minds campaign to motivate the importance of education in science, technology, engineering, and math STEM, fields. Personal life Stevens credits her mother for supporting her career as a tennis player since she was very young. When she won the 2017 US Open, she recalled an instance at age 11 when her mother believed Stevens had high upside in spite of being told by an instructor at a junior tennis academy that she would be lucky to get a tennis scholarship to a Division II college. Stevens is of Trinidadian descent through her maternal grandfather Noel Smith, who came to the United States from Trinidad to pursue a career as a doctor. She has cited her grandfather as her hero and one of her biggest influences growing up. Stevens's favorite player growing up was Kim Claysters, who congratulated Stevens in person after her 2017 U.S. Open title. Doubt she was also a fan of the Williams sisters and kept a poster of Serena in her bedroom as a kid. Although she disliked that they were uninterested in signing autographs at a match she attended and has also commented that neither of them tried to serve as one of her mentors, Stevens has stated she developed a good relationship with the Williams sisters. She also noted that she has read Serena's autobiography and respects her strong personality. Stevens has worked with Souls for Souls, a charity that collects new and used shoes to give to children in poverty. She also started the Sloan Stevens Foundation, which helps build tennis courts and set up after-school tennis programs for underserved students in conjunction with supplemental tutoring. The foundation is run by Stevens, her mother, and her uncle Ronald Smith. They have organized programs in Compton, Fresno, and Fort Lauderdale. Stevens is engaged to United States national soccer team player Josie Altador, who was also one of her childhood friends from living in Florida. Doubt she had previously dated fellow American tennis player Jack Sock for over a year. In late 2017, Stevens graduated from Indiana University East with a bachelor's degree in communications studies. She finished her degree while recovering from foot surgery earlier in the year. She credits her time away from playing tennis that was spent on her studies and her job with the Tennis Channel for improving her perspective on being a professional tennis player. Career Statistics Grand Slam Tournament Finals Singles, 2, 1 title, 1 runner-up WTA Championship Finals Singles, 1, 1 runner-up Singles Performance Timeline, runner-up Singles performance timeline and runner up. Singles performance timeline and runner up. Singles performance timeline and runner up. Singles performance timeline and runner up.